the housing market update for July 2022. Are we going to see a market crash? Well, unlikely. Check out the reasons for that in this video where Simon Hodgson, the mortgage broker and I talk about this very subject. All right, so I'm Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants and with me I have Simon Hodgson from Funded, the person to speak to about buy-to-let mortgages. How are you doing, Simon? Yeah, really good. How about you, Simon? Good to connect. It's, it's great to have you back on the show, talk about house prices. And what I've done with this house price movement is uh, maybe you could talk to us about uh, the movement from um, March 2022 to April 2022, because the numbers have just been released. House prices for April 22, 2022 have gone up to 281,000 from previous month, have they not? Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, we continue to see strong growth um, within the, you know, the housing market. Um, it, it kind of continues at the moment with the uncertainties going on in both the, you know, the UK and around the world. It's kind of one of the only places at the moment you can realistically put your money and get a return on. The, the stock market is incredibly difficult and you know, kind of going down. S&P 500 and the Dow, et cetera, across the pond in the States. Again, not really somewhere where you could reliably put money. Crypto, don't get us talking on crypto. Absolutely shot to pieces at least 60 to 70% down this year. Um, certainly not somewhere where you could put your money. Um, and yeah, property has continued to grow and it looks set to continue to be a good place to put your money. And don't forget, property gives us two incomes. It gives us capital growth, which obviously we've got here on the chart, and rental profit. Um, what we are seeing um, is the fact that we've got this, the more the prices of properties are going up on a consecutive basis. Yeah. Um, which is, is is astonishing. Year by year, it's just increasing value. Um, and what I'm also seeing is that wages are also increasing from an inflationary perspective. Um, you know, inflation is high, and we know that the, the interest rates have, have come in. But I think people are talking about house prices maybe taking a hit because of recession, uh, and we're going to do another video about that one. C certainly, the data sets that we're seeing uh, and understanding would suggest that you know, the strength of the market is going to continue. Um, it's perhaps not quite as strong as it was, but it's still, you know, and I think we're going to look at another slide and, and look at how historically uh, mortgage approvals have kind of gone along. But yeah, it, it, it remains strong. I'm still seeing in the brokerage good inquiries, lots of inquiries. Um, it's slightly easier to get viewings on owner-occupier houses than it was maybe three or four months ago. But nonetheless, they're still selling very, very quickly um, from the estate agent's window. Um, and as I said, you're on the back of that investors, you know, us as investors, yeah, you, you, know, you leave your money in the bank. In 12 months' time, it's currently your 100K. Let's say you've got 100K in the bank. In real terms, with inflation where it's sat at the moment, it's actually going to be worth less than 90,000. Whereas if you park it into bricks and mortar, there's a good chance that its capital gain appreciation will go up over the next 12 months and you'll have made some rental income. So if you compare the two together, bank or houses, it, it's still a very, very clear winner. Mm. I mean, the, the, the fact that affordability is always going to be the question mark. Um, you know, if we look back into the April 2015, you know, the average house price was 9.78% and, and of the salary. I know there's question marks over salary or what is that representing? This is from data set from HMRC Direct and ONS. So there are going to be question marks. Well, why isn't it 30,000? I think there may be something to do with the way that you get benefit in kind and bonuses and whatever else. This is straight salary. Um, but you know the the affordability has brought nine point seven eight times house price to uh, to wages in April two thousand fifteen. It's now eleven times. I mean, do you think that's going to continue to to increase? Which means who is it actually going to be able to afford these houses? Uh, I mean, although we haven't got any really up to date data um, coming out, um, inflationary pressures also affect uh, you know us as employers. And I'm pretty sure you as well, Simon, um, you're getting decent staff at the moment is hard. And to get the right member of staff, they're having to pay more money. And that hasn't really factored into some of these data sets, house price to wages. So you know, in real terms, wages are going up. And 
you know, whilst not quite as high as inflation, they are nonetheless going up. Um, so I think, you know, the, the house price to wage data set will potentially stay around that 11-ish, just over 11-ish for the coming few months. So that gap isn't, doesn't look to be increasing any further right now. Fair enough. That's good to know. And, and you mentioned about mortgages, so let's talk about mortgages. I mean, uh, from the just before the show, I was talking about there is a it seems to be like a huge decline from the late twenties, twenty twenties to twenty twenty two. If people see that 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 bar going down, people will start saying, "Ah, I told you so." There's a house short. There's a there's less demand in the the housing market, but. There was something that you brought to my attention very, very well. And uh, do you want to bring that to the attention for the audience as well? Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you took this graph at, you know, at, at face value, a snapshot, and then listen to what you hear in the news, yes, you'd be, so you uh, would be forgiven for thinking that the housing market is in great decline. But historically, um, pre-COVID, you can see that levels sat at around about an average of mid-60s in terms of mortgage approvals per month. There's a spike as we went into the first part of 2020. Don't forget, that is when Brexit was actually signed, sealed and delivered. And the housing market had been a bit slow leading up to that. We then go into COVID, mortgage approvals dropped off a cliff. But if you take that, that the rise after COVID lockdown and fill in the COVID lockdown dip, you can see that we are broadly similar-ish. Now, we've had the stamp duty holiday, which did bring in some more. But yeah, current mortgage approvals are roughly where our probably four to five year average has sat within a 10% margin. For my money, um, Simon, that does not show a mortgage market that is dropping off a cliff. 